Okay, so you looked at the gradient tool in last night's flip video. Today we're going to use the gradient. So the first thing that we need to do is draw a few vertical lines, making sure that they go outside the box. I'm going to select the box after I've drawn my lines. I need to go to my Pathfinder and I need to select Divide. So I'm going to pull my Pathfinder over and of course that is function F6. I'm going to find Divide. I'm going to click on Divide. Now, in my normal select arrow, all these boxes are grouped. I can go into each box with the plus arrow, which we're going to do. I'm going to click on the first box using my direct select plus arrow. Now I'm going to go over to my gradient, and here's my gradient. You may find it over here as well. I'm just going to click in the gradient tool. I'm going to do that into my second box. I'm going to click my gradient. I'll do that into my third box. I'll do it in my fourth box, just to see that you could get the gradient. But now let's change our gradient. So I'm going to click in the second box. I'm going to go over to my gradient tool. And notice it shows the direction the gradient is made. Well, we're going to drag from the top down, holding the shift key. Now I'm going to go back to my select tool, which is A. I'm going to go to my gradient tool. And I want to go in the opposite direction now. I'm going to go back to my A tool. I'm going to go back to my gradient tool, which is just G. And this time, we'll go up. Now I'm going to go back to my select tool, V. Now I have a gradient that goes from left to right, top to bottom, right to left and bottom to top. Now in my horizontal, again, quickly draw three lines, holding down that shift key. I'm going to go back to the V to select tool, divide. Now I'm going to go back to my A tool, click in that first box. This time I'm going to do a gradient, but this time I'm going to change the gradient. Pull out your gradient, so I'm just going to click and drag it out. And I'm going to go over to my colors. I'm going to pick green. And this time I'm going to drag the swatch. And we call these, square, these squares a swatch. I'm going to drag it down. And I'm going to place it over my gradient white. So I have the black there. I'm going to click on my second one. This time we're going to take the white swatch, and we'll move it over the black. And this time I'm going to go with my eyedropper to get that first one. Now in the gradient, there is the gradient slider, which says how much of a color is going to be blended in. So move it so there's less black, and now I'm going to go back to my select tool A eyedropper to get the white, and let's add more white in this one. So we'll add some more white. You can also slide the bottom color, which will fill up, just so you can see how different ways of shading. Now we're going to do our diagonal. Again, going through, I'm going to go to my V, so I select them all, Pathfinder. All right. Now, gradients need always to go in the direction of the line. So let's go back to A. Now this time, we're going to add three different colors, all using the color guide. Right now we have two colors. We're going to pull back, we're going to bring back one of our blue colors here. may not be the exact color, so let's switch these so they match up. There we go. So now I have three colors. We'll try that again. I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to go to my color guide so I can get some 
different shades to see what I would like to use in that purple. I'm going to grab a darker purple for one side, the other side, and the inside we can do black just to change it up. Again, let's just go with a white swatch. We go eyedropper, and this time we'll go with the slider so we have less of that white band just to see how it would work. Okay. Control V if you ever mess up lets you go back any steps that you need. Now you have gradient. Now let's be a little creative. And let's draw with some zigzag S lines. We're going to make some faces. We're going to start with our ellipse tool. I'm going to make two circles for my eyes. Now we're going to use some really cool effects. So I'm going to come to the effects. I'm going to go to dis distort. I'm going to go to zigzag. I have to hit preview. And I want to reduce the size. And I want to increase the ridges. Now I have a really cool shape. I'm going to hit OK. I can make another zigzag by going to effects. Distort. This time I'm going to go to tweak. I'm going to hit preview. And I'm just going to adjust my horizontal and my vertical. And this is going to give me a more random shape. Next let's draw a mouth. And we'll go back up to the distort to the zigzag. And let's hit preview. Excellent. Now let's talk a little bit about line as I zoom in. With line, we want to stay away from Illustrator's habit, default, of drawing a line that is a single thickness. So I'm going to click on the mouth, and I'm going to come up to my path for my uniform. And let's click on a width. Uh, let's go with that. So I used the width 3 profile, and I changed my width to 3 points. Let's go to this first eye, and let's go to a width profile 2, and let's make it 2. Notice how it gets thicker and thinner. Let's come to our final one. Let's go to a circle. I'm not sure if I like that one. Uh, let's see. I like that one, the first one, which is a width profile of 1. And we'll give it a 2. We're going to scale this one down to a 5, make it nice and, and thin. Okay. Now, our next thing we might want to do is fill it in. I'm going to fill this shape in as well. Now, notice my shape does not match the illustrator drawn circle. So for each of these, I have to go up to my Objects, Expand Appearance. I'm going to come back up here to Objects, Expand Appearance. This takes it from the effects to actually making where I can now work with it. And what does this allow me to do? It allows me to come in and zoom in. There's two points on these. And I'm just grabbing the anchor point. Pulling out one point. There we go. And I'll do that over here. 
to our S line. Our S line, let's use a square. And again, I'm going to go to effects, zigzag, preview, but we're going to say smooth. Now it doesn't work, huh? Both of the zigzags and the S line work best with an rounded shape. So I'm going to take my circle. Let's just look at the outline here. Transform zigzag preview. Let's go to a smooth shape. Get more like an amoeba shape when you hit OK. Now I'm going to make an ellipse. Zigzag effects. Zigzag. And smooth it out. Keep that size small. Move down my ridges. There we go. This to me looks more like a mouth. So I'm going to make that a mouth. Here's a nice script. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and copy my I over. Now we're going to enhance these our shapes by going to our Vits variable. I'm just trying different ones. And I'm going to do different ones. Now that I have my width variable, I have to go into expand. I'm going to go up into expand. And I'm going to go up into expand. I last are our implied lines. And this is just more of practice of drawing some straight lines, holding down your shift key. I made it a three point just so that we can see. I'm going to hold down my alt key to copy. Let's take the first one and give it a width of two, a variable of two. Let's give this one a width of three. Let's go in the next one and give it a width of five. And on the last one, we'll get it a width of six. Now let's means the line won't be solid going across. I'm going to come over to my tool, my uh, <coughs> menus. I'm going to click on stroke and dash. I'm going to repeat that dash. I'm going to repeat that dash. I'm going to repeat that dash. Now we've had our implied lines. We have our S lines and our zigzag lines.